Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Wendy's, we have the meat. <laughs> if you're a kid that grew up in the USA, I guarantee you and your family made a stop once or twice to Mickey D's. McDonald's used to be a childlike heaven filled with chicken nuggets and giant play areas, but the one thing I remember so vividly were the Happy Meals, and not for the food, but for the toys. Now, these were probably some of the cheapest toys on the market, but it was never really about their functionality and more about the excitement of having apple slices and Spider-Man? But in the early to mid 2000s, McDonald's partnered with a few gaming companies to release some Happy Meal toys that I believe were the best Happy Meal entertainment they ever created. And so today on Nostalgia Vault, I'm gonna be reminiscing about a trendy era of fast food entertainment involving these little LCD devices. Hello, welcome to Nostalgia Vault, the show where I reminisce and talk about cheap plastic entertainment. Today is an exciting episode on the show. I've been waiting to do this one for so long and I finally have the assets to do it. But today, the main topic of this episode is Happy Meals. Everyone knows them, everyone loves them. I remember getting Happy Meals pretty much all the time as a kid. Whenever we would end up at McDonald's, I would get a Happy Meal and I would get a very cheap plastic toy. And obviously it depended on what the Happy Meals were at the time. If it was a video game themed one, I would always go for a Happy Meal. But if it wasn't really up my alley, I would kind of just go for a simple McChicken. But you know, you never know as a kid. I mean, like whatever floats your boat. I don't know, what am I saying? <laughs> but today I'm reminiscing about a specific trend that happened not just with McDonald's, but kind of just the fast food chain as a whole. Growing up, there was many different ways of cheap entertainment and not just cheap entertainment, but cheap video game entertainment. Like there were things that were claimed to, to be in the video game realm, but they were so cheap that they really weren't. The main thing I can think of is LCD entertainment. If you don't know what LCD entertainment is, it's basically the same technology as a calculator, only it's kind of morphed into more of a video game structure. So you had games that were just super simple, you know, it had to be the most bare minimum game possible. So why am I telling you this? Well, eventually this LCD entertainment made its way into the Happy Meal realm, and that's where I want to stick to today. That's where I want to kind of dig into my corner of my nostalgia vault and talk about LCD McDonald's Happy Meal toys. We are digging deep in the vault today. <laughs> now, this trend kind of started around probably 2003, 2004, and ended up kind of like hitting different video game mascots like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro and even like some sports games. But this trend kind of lasted for a good few years. Um, and so, but I, the ones that I mainly remember and vividly remember are the Sonic lineup of LCD toys. These LCD toys uh, were very charming. I loved the designs. I loved how colorful they were and just they were themed after multiple Sonic characters. And just looking at these toys specifically, I just felt like these were such a big step up from what we got up until that point. Because up until that point, uh, Happy Meal toys had to be the cheapest toys possible because they had to manufacture probably like a million of these small little plastic toys and put them in every single Happy Meal across everywhere. And so it's understandable why they had to be so cheap because they had to manufacture so many of them to so many different kids, which is why I'm just kind of so surprised by these devices. I just think they they were just such an upgrade compared to what kids got up until that point. Now, I was super, super young when these started to become a thing, and so I didn't really uh, experience the trend in its early days, but I did kind of hit the latter end of it. Now, the main way I was kind of exposed to these devices were, well, okay, so I, I did experience having them straight from McDonald's, straight from a Happy Meal. I do remember having a couple of them, but the main memory I have, the main, I guess, most vivid memory I have of them was 
actually at my grandma's house. One of my grandmas had a giant tote full of just an accumulation of all of my cousin's toys. There was just an accumulation of literally everything. There were so many different toys in this one tote. And I remember every single time I would head over to my grandma's house, I would always make my way to that tote and always dig through that whole tote and try and find as many of these LCD devices as I could. And the most vivid one I remember is this Shadow the Hedgehog device. This device is literally just so nostalgic looking at it. Unfortunately, it doesn't work, but I do remember how it works. And I think it was really just uh, there was Shadow the Hedgehog grinding on this little rail here, and all you had to do was press the button to dodge the obstacles that came your way. But literally, that was it, and that's how, that's the extent of kind of most of these games. They were so bare bones that they really required only like one button. They were all kind of high score based, so you kind of just either dodged an obstacle, whatever. It, they were just so bare bones, but again, they were an upgrade in terms of entertainment compared to what we, what kids got up until this LCD trend. I also remember this uh, skateboarding one. This one fortunately does work. And so you kind of just, as Sonic, you kind of just are on this half pipe and you're trying to collect these gems or I don't even know what you're really collecting. But again, just dodging obstacles and pressing the buttons on the left and right. And I just love these designs of these things. They're bright, they're colorful. They were different games. They were themed after different characters and they were just fun to collect. There were so many, these, this again, this trend went on for a long time. So there was a lot of them to collect. Eventually they made their way to kind of a more clamshell design to kind of extend the durability of them. But that's kind of where I mainly saw these LCD devices was at my grandma's house. And they were actually originally my cousins. And so I never really, oh, I again, I owned a couple of them, but the main way I was exposed to these things was at my grandma's. Now, one thing I do appreciate about McDonald's is they kind of catered to the gaming demographic. Um, as a kid, I really appreciated kind of just the way they appealed to us. I remember there was like GameCube kiosks in different places. There was also like these touchscreen monitors that had a lot of different mini games on them. Uh, and then obviously with these Happy Meal toys, they just kind of appealed and Sega knew this. They um, they appealed to the demographic and I just really appreciated it. I felt like I was seen almost like as a kid, I was like, oh yeah, Sonic, like, all right. Like I know this guy and then this is a video game. I love video games. So it's like, I don't know. It just, it, it kind of, I just appreciated how they kind of appealed to our demographic. Even though these were like super bare bones entertainment, literally the barest of bones when it came to video games, again, quotation marks and video games, I still loved these. It just brings me back to eating a Happy Meal in the back seat, popping one of these out and playing it right after my meal and then eventually losing it in the car and then coming back to a trip months later and seeing them again all sticky and gross because they've been stuck in the cracks and crevices of the back seat and just turning them on and them still working. Like it's just, it brings me back to those moments. Again, I just, I have a whole freaking bag of these. Oh, dude, it's just, it's Nostalgia Vault. It's Nostalgia Vault in its, in its finest. I don't think a lot of people are gonna go out of their way to buy these LCD Dabby Meal toys, but yeah, I did. And they're just so charming. I love the designs of them. I love how colorful they are and how each one is a different themed mini game. It, it's a pretty small part of my Nostalgia Vault, but it is a vivid one. Um, I, I, I do remember there was a lot of memories playing these at my grandma's house um, and in the back seat of my car. And I uh, really enjoyed these. I, I don't really have much else to say about them, really. I know this is kind of a smaller episode of the show, but they're just charming LCD toys. And again, if you have any uh, nostalgic memories or any experiences with LCD entertainment or specifically the LCD Happy Meals, I would love to hear them down below in the comments. I love hearing your guys' stories. I love hearing your guys' experiences. So if you wanna leave a comment down below, uh, just talking about these LCD devices, please do not hesitate to drop a comment involving anything with these things. 
So yeah, again, that wraps up uh, this episode of Nostalgia Vault. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and seeing me ramble about this little corner of my Nostalgia Vault. I know it's a shorter episode, but I really love this series. I thought I think it's been going really well, and I just uh, appreciate you guys just sharing my same weird, obscure interests. And so uh, I really appreciate it. And so thanks for listening. Thanks for allowing me to open up my Nostalgia Vault. And I will uh, catch you guys later. Uh, peace out. <laughs> Thank you.